So the biggest debate um, going on recently is who should be the first quarterback to, can, uh, to go to the San Francisco 49ers? Should it be Justin Fields or Mac Jones? This debate between these two about do you want the more athletic quarterback or do you want the more, the more polished quarterback? Do you want the quarterback with the most upside or do you want the quarterback that's the most ready right now? Uh, it's, it's a debate. It's an ongoing debate, not between NFL scouts and NFL experts, but between, of course, fans, right? This, uh, as far as us armed general manager coaches, right? These, 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 uh, these guys that love to sit at home, like myself, uh, it's, it's this huge debate that's going on and it's really all about preference. Um, I don't think there's really a bad decision. I think that's the number one, the number one fear is, Will the San Francisco 49ers make a Mitchell Trubisky mistake as far as they as the Bears should have took Deshaun Watson, the Bears should have took Patrick Mahomes, but they took Mitchell Trubisky, and 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 here's the kind of the scary part for or for Matt Jones and Mitchell Trubisky as far as the comparison between those two, those guys didn't come up until late in the draft process, not until combine pro days before. It was all Justin Fields of being the number two number two overall pick, even before going into his uh, Justin Fields junior year. It was all Justin Fields, number two behind Lawrence, or even debate between Lawrence about who's going number one. And now, kind of ever since the college football season was gone was over, it's now been Zach Wilson. It's now been Mac Jones. It's now been even at times Kellen Mond that has eclipsed Justin Fields and Trey Lance that's eclipsed Justin Fields of being that second guy took him. Now we're in a time where the Jets will probably take Zach Wilson with the number two overall pick. And now the San Francisco 49ers will be a number three. And I think that both quarterbacks will do very, very well fitting with Kyle Shannon. I think Kyle Shannon has a very, very good, uh, not only a good offensive coordinator or a good offensive mind. He's very, very good when it comes to developing quarterbacks. I mean, you look at the, the history that Kyle Shannon has had, the Matt Schaubs, the Matt Ryans of the world, even the Jimmy Garoppolo's and what we've seen so far, um, from, um, I forgot who the San Francisco 49ers, I forgot who their backup quarterback was, from the, from the Mullins, from the Nick Mullins of the world, even we saw from the success that he had with San Francisco, you're now thinking that with any quarterback that can be brought in, it's they're going to be successful. I think the thing is, if you're going to make the case for Mac Jones, the quarterbacks that I just named, they're all pocket passers. They don't have the best mobility in the world. Maybe Garoppolo might is probably the best out of all of them as far as mobility, but that's not really saying as much. They're all pocket passers, right? Justin Fields is more of a dual threat. Um, he's more of a guy that can definitely take off with his legs. He's a guy that can roll out. He's more of a 4-4 mobile runner. Matt Jones, you know what you're getting. He's not the fastest in the world. He's not the most mobile in the world. He's not the most elusive in the pocket. But he's a guy that can quickly process information, quickly react to what he's seeing, can go through his progressions, doesn't have the greatest arm strength in the world, but the dude is smart. The dude is just very, very smart. He is very, very good in processing what he is seeing and, re and quickly reacting to it. From Justin Fields, from what I've seen for Justin Fields so far, Justin Fields, again, has all the physical tools. He has the arm. He has the athletic ability. He has the uh, he has the speed. He has the size. He's a big guy. Um, the intangibles, the traits are there for Justin Fields. I think the, the, the two most questionable things, and it's not as bad as what everyone is making it out to be, but it's definitely things that are questionable that you can definitely question, is number one, he doesn't really, he doesn't have the fastest release in the world. He actually has a pretty slow release. It's actually kind of, it's not as slow as Cam Newton, but he does have a slow release. Now, Justin Fields has the arm to kind of make up for it. We've seen some throws from Justin Fields with the slow release that it's, it's NFL arms. It's NFL quality as far as the throws that he makes. And not just that, he's throwing some complete and utter bullet passes with his release. So he can make up for it. Not as strong as Cam Newton or Josh Allen, but he but again it's more Trevor Lawrence. It's it's it's, it's a it's a borderline elite level arm. And trust me, as long as it's, as long as it's an NFL arm, it doesn't matter how strong it is, as long as you can make the throws. And Justin Fields can make those throws. But that's a little bit of a concern, I guess you can say for some NFL scouts. They might not like the slow releases from quarterbacks. They might see that as a thing that they just can't coach. Um, I will say the second thing, this is probably even more concerning than the slow release, is he doesn't really process the information sometimes. He doesn't really, like what he's seeing sometimes in the field, he doesn't quickly react to it. He hesitates a little bit. He waits a little bit. 
and he doesn't, and sometimes th this can, you know, there are cases where he had two, three receivers open sometimes, and he elects to kind of run instead of just going with his initial gut feeling. It's like sometimes for me, Justin, watching Justin Fields, he doesn't really trust what he's seeing sometimes. Like he knows the dude's wide open, but he does, but he elects to either take off or maybe he elects to go with his second option instead of just going with his initial, his initial feeling, that initial gut feeling, that initial first option. And that can be concerning. Again, it's not as bad as what everyone is making it out to be. Because again, look at the stats. Justin Fields completed 70% of his passes. I mean, Justin Fields had the one year where he had 41 touchdowns. And I actually think, again, his sophomore year was definitely better than his junior tape. But then you look at the Clemson game where even though Justin Fields completed six touchdown passes, you look at that game and he could actually had a better game than what he had. You know, there were just at times where if you go, if you go back and you look back, he missed open reads. He missed... He, he And he stared it down. Here's the thing. He saw it, but it didn't, he didn't elect to go to it. And that can be a little concerning. I think also the Northwestern game is also concerning where, he, where also those flaws came into place where he did have players that were wide open and didn't really throw to it. He saw it, but didn't really kind of get to it. Uh, the Alabama game, there were times where he had some receivers open. Now, again, it's not really his fault because receivers – just really couldn't get open. Even when they were open, they really couldn't, they couldn't really grab those catches or Justin Fields would throw a little bit behind them, but it wasn't really his, his worst game in the world. Um, but yeah, there are some games that are definitely concerning um, that NFL scouts would definitely take a look at. And I think the biggest question is compared to his 2019 tape is, was this because of COVID? Was this because he was just injured? Um, there's just a lot of things that you got to take into consideration. Um, but those are two, I would say, flaws that you might have to just take into consideration. Again, it's not as bad as what everyone is making out to be. Not as bad as what everyone is making out to be. But those are two things that are weaknesses of Justin Fields' games. Do I think those things can be coached? Yes. But there are cases, guys like Mitchell Chabitsky in a, in a case where everyone thought that, where everyone was saying the same thing, where, yeah, he doesn't, there are times, he's inconsistent when it comes to, reading and reacting to what he's seeing and people thought it could be coached. I remember I, I remember going back to 2017, Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper were saying those things can be coached. We found out from Mitchell Trubisky, not only could it be coached, it actually made him worse because then he was scared to run. Then it kind of, then it came to just him being inaccurate. It was just a complete and utter mess. And now is it kind of scaring teams away from we don't want another, you know, another Mitchell Trubisky. I don't, I don't know, but that's just, that's a fatal flaw. I'm just using Mitchell Trubisky as, as an example. We've seen, we've actually had quarterbacks that don't have the the greatest reaction time that still were able to succeed. Guys like Brett Favre, to, to, to give you guys an example. Randy Cun Randall Cunningham was another successful quarterback that, that really didn't have the greatest read and reaction type of, you know, processing speed, but was, was again, when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, he actually developed it. He actually got it better. So you can do it. You can develop it, but you can also succeed without it. Um, but overall wise, it's really just all about preference for the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shannon. Which quarterback do you want? Do you want the guy that's, that's probably the more polished quarterback right now in Mac Jones? Or do you want the guy with more upside in, in Justin Fields? Justin Fields, we all can agree that he has way more upside than Mac Jones. And if I was the San Francisco 49ers and I love Mac Jones, I would take Justin Fields solely, be, you know, solely because of Patrick Mahomes wasn't the most polished, but because he had the most help around him, because he had a, because he had a mentor, he had Andy Reid, he had weapons, he had he had he had Alex Smith. He actually had he actually had a bunch of things that would actually went on to develop Patrick Mahomes to making him the quarterback that he is today. I have to take that into consideration. Is like, what do you rather have? Would you rather have a Kirk Cousins or maybe a Matt Ryan? Or would you rather have a Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson? It's really all about preference of what, what you want. In my case, I would go with Fields. But for a lot of people's taste, they would rather go with Mac Jones. It's just all about preference at this point, guys. It's just all about preference.